going through the down, down, downtown of the curve of economic, and the president came in Andy to resuscitate our economy, which was not doing good. He has done his bit. He's then doing his bit. It's only that it is easy to criticize the man in the arena, like it was once said. All of these members here come from constituencies, and they are criticized such a time when the constituents, constituents feel they are not doing good. But the effort they are giving, they know themselves that it is very difficult to, rule, to, to govern at such a time when there is economic crisis. Mr. Speaker, on the key issue of education, the President made a deliberate move to put about 27% of our budget to education, and he was elected when CBC was about to take off. He has done his best in putting CBC into the right path. He's been able to employ teachers up to the tune of 56,000, which has never been seen in this country before. And we want to echo President for that because education is the foundation of our growth and our economic growth as a country. The President did well when it comes to health matters. I myself, I sit in a, con in, in a committee of health, and we came up with three bills or four including the social insurance fund, primary health care fund, and critical and emergency and critical disease fund, which will be able to bring our economy and do a radical reform in our economy, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I can assure you, sitting in a, in a committee of health in the next 10 or, or, or so months, our health system will have changed and there will be a paradigm shift from how we used to do things in this country. He brought about the 100,000 community health promoters, which will, will, be able, will go a long way in, a, in being able to identify and be able to solve the issues of diseases at the primary health level. Mr. Speaker, KEMSA, since the time of COVID, has been facing a downtown and has been in total crisis and total problem. But the, the president, in his own wisdom, was able to come up with a plan to resuscitate KEMSA and to bring back KEMSA because that is what will be able to give drugs to our hospitals and to be able to make our health system run. And we want to commend the team at the KEMSA and the president, and even in the budget, the president increased money to the KEMSA so that we're able to pick from where it was and be able to serve this country well. Mr. Speaker, the issue of cattle rustling, which I come from a northern, northern part of this country, which is facing a very serious challenge, we want to commend the President. He is on a journey to silence the guns, which has been terrorizing our people. He spoke well about it, and his formula seemed to be bearing fruits, and we want to tell the President that we support him. As Kenyans of goodwill, as Kenyans who love peace, we have to stand with the President so that he able to bring to end the menace of insecurity which has been in this country since independent. Mr. Speaker, the issue of fertilizer, some of these members here who come from towns and come from areas where they have not seen agriculture don't know the impact the, uh, the fertilizer subsidy has brought to this country. We want to encourage the President and echo him for what he has done to be able to subsidize fertilizer and to transform agriculture in this country of ours. Mr. Speaker, President is President at such a time that there is no any other leader who could have taken Kenya through these challenges we are facing at the moment. And we go to the Anshak brothers, Mr. Speaker, this country will be a banana republic, but then to the genius of William Ruta as he has been able to keep the country going and be able to remove the country of the economic cliff which was facing and was courtesy of the Anshak brothers, Mr. Speaker, who today we are seeing even the construction an airport which is leaking. Mr. Speaker, it's a shame that Anshak brothers were ruling this country at such a time that we were in the last three years. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, is it okay who's next?